On the eleventh day of Christmas my postman gave to me Eleven Manx wool beanies Hello and welcome to the 12 skeins of Christmas. Okay, we've got two days left, so thanks for coming along with me. This has been really fun for me to do. <sighs> well, we are back in full lockdown, which is pants. Not that I've been able to see many of my other friends because they're all in tier four anyway, which is a bit of a shame. Um, anyway. So I hope you're all okay, whether you're making plans to work from home, missing your friends or going back to work or being on the front line as a key worker, or if you're just in the middle of nowhere and you're isolated anyway, it doesn't change much. I'm sending out, I'm sending out optimistic good vibes for the new year to everyone and hugs from a safe distance. Right. It's been lovely to read your comments and to hear what projects you have planned for the next year so hopefully we'll get through this together. <laughs> In today's 12 skeins I'll be talking about Jenny and Rawdon's yarn and they make lovely Manx Lockton yarn from their shop on the Isle of Man where they have 900 acres. You'll have just seen a little video of these mitts that I'm wearing. They've got a lovely little leather button that I got from my stash. I think it was probably one of my grandma's ones <laughs> and it's really nice. Um, but I have had second mitt syndrome and I haven't made the second one so I might end up fixing the thumb a bit. It's a little bit baggy and Maybe I'll run a test knit if anyone's up for that. Um, it's just got a little Manx Lockton sheep there, which I think is really cool. Jenny and Rawdon's farm is based in the Isle of Man. So the Isle of Man is a little island in the northwest of England and it's probably most well known for the TT um, motor racing rally that they have every year in sort of May and June time. It's been cancelled this year but it must be amazing, it must have, um, you must get such a unique view of the island from there. Um, apparently the island gets completely overpopulated and um, I, didn't, I didn't really know my granddad but I know that he used to go to the TT racing rally sometimes to visit the Isle of Man because he was, he loved motorbikes, he went on loads of epic adventures and took um, photographs of him on his bike and of the scenery in I think it was the Alps, anyway, big mountains. <laughs> so it must be an absolutely lovely place to live and I'll talk a little bit later about um, Jenny and Rawdon in question time. So, the wool that I received from MR Produce, um, uh, you probably can't see that, but <laughs> I'll put in a little picture of the wool. I think I might have to order some more actually because I think I only got 50 grams of the DK. Oh, I remember what I used it for. I made a cowl for my dad so that's why I don't have enough to make a second mitten really. Um, but yeah, this is lovely. It's got chocolate brown colour to it and mm, it's just really lovely and squishy and soft. It, it doesn't have a halo, it's not hairy. This is just a DK and it's really soft um, and lofty and they now do lace weight and Aran weight yarns. Um, I tried some of their carded bats that they've got but actually I found out that it was quite, it was a bit tricky to spin with and apparently Manx can be a little bit tricky because it has a short staple but um, as I'm a beginner uh, I'm probably just not very good with it um, but I did use the cardi bats for thrumming something so thrumming you sort of knit bats into a woolly garment and you get a lot of thrum hats historically so that the inside would have this lovely soft lining. My friend Pat did uh, I think it was a thrum 
purse or something and it properly looked like Muppet skin. It had loads of different floofy colours in it. It was really fun. Um, but yeah, so I, I did a little experiment with thrumming with this and um, it worked really well. So they've got loads of, I think they said they had like 25 different products in their shop, including yarn kits. So you can just, I think there's a hat and some other things so you can, you get the yarn and the pattern together. I have been dying to show you um, this really cute video that Rawdon sent me um, of their Kelpie. Now I've never really seen a Kelpie before except on this programme Offspring that I watch, it's like an Australian show and there's a main dog that's a Kelpie that's called Rocket and he's so cute um, but this dog um, so Rawdon and Jenny's dog Flicks, he goes up to the sheep and like it's like he's talking to them and he's a bit of a sheep whisperer. In the video that I'm going to show next, it's so cute, um, and it's uh, Flicks with Ragnar who's one of the tups with uh, with his girls, <laughs> his, la his ladies, sorry that's what Rawdon said. Oh, so I hope you enjoyed that video, it's so cute! Um, and now it's question time! So, I asked Rawdon, how did you start making your wool? And he told me that Jenny originally started with six Manx Lockton sheep and then eventually she got a good tup and they managed to increase the flock. Um, they were mainly used for lawn mowing, I think that's how a few people start really. So as the flock increased year on year, they were making wool, but they weren't really making anything with it. They were selling it to the wool board, um, but they thought they might just talk to a UK spinner and get some made. So they came away with about 1800 balls of Aran and DK wool, and they decided to build a website and then try and sell it online. So within 14 months, they'd sold all of that batch. Uh, Jenny then took back the family's 200 acres and now they've got a 900 acre farm in total. In 2019 they built the Manx Lochton wool shop on the farm as vis a visitor attraction and that looked like it was going to be very promising but then Covid-19 struck and I think the Isle of Man pretty much shut its borders or you had to isolate. Um, so. They was, they've still been progressing with the toilet block for the shop and they've got a paddock where people could come to see the sheep when we return to some sense of normality hopefully later this year. Really crossing fingers there. Um, yeah and they said they produce 22 products for their shop and they sell worldwide and I'll show you one of their worldwide customers garments later. Number two, what is your favourite part of working with the sheep? The most wonderful part of working with the sheep is that they all have their distinct characters. Being primitive sheep, some are natural leaders and they tend to monitor the weather for the rest of the flock. We farm in a different way to established sheep farms as the primary product is wool and then once the sheep have grown up a bit um, and the meat's actually supposed to be nice and mutton's supposed to be really nice and hogged as well. Um, Anyway, but when they're older, they'll be, they'll be sold for me. The best wool comes from the shearlings and the weathers. This means that we keep our weathers for up to five and six years of age as they consistently produce good wool. The meat at this age is really amazing and sells well. Lochtons are never predictable, so this also makes us anticipate their next move. 
there's a saying that if you want to keep lochtons you must have a good lid on your field as they're really great escapologists of <laughs> yeah I've heard that um have you had to do anything different for Covid? Thankfully Covid has not affected us as many other parts of the world. The Isle of Man shut its borders early on and we sadly have had just over 20 deaths. Um, this was before Christmas that he's answered my questions. Um, during our lockdown we were so fortunate to have a beautiful farm to isolate in. The island still has its borders shut to visitors and the government is very strict on returning residents self-isolating for two weeks. If not, some people have gone to jail with a police record as another deterrent. With these strict measures in place, the Isle of Man had, had been back to normal life since the end of June. I, well, I assume there's some restrictions going on now. Four, what is your favourite garment that has been made from your wool? So, Rawdon has sent me some photos of a jumper um, from a lady from Taiwan and she loves to use their wool. I, I met a load of Taiwanese students when I was at uni doing my masters and I really miss going to gigs with my friend Wen. We always used to have loads of fun. I don't know what it was about Birmingham that brought all the Taiwanese students who must have a good marketing board over there. Um, I think we had, yeah, five people doing arts, arts project management. So yeah, hello if you're watching. <laughs> As Rawdon mentioned, um, they export all their wool over the world and our customers give us wonderful feedback as to what they make with our wool. That's nice. This item was from a customer who produced this beautiful garment from 13 balls of double knit. So I'll put that in here. Thanks Jenny and Rawdon for sending me that, that's been really lovely to be able to talk about your wool and I'll definitely be getting some more to finish off these mitts that I've been doing. Um, I read in Sue Blacker's book Pure, Pure Wool I think it's called, there was a nice cardigan for uh, Manx Lochton wool. Uh, it was really textured and the stitch definition with this is really it's quite good, I've done a little chevron and some ribbing here and it really comes out well, I've washed these so it still holds up after washing it was really nice to knit with, really soft and I think I did this on maybe 3mm needles so it's quite a tight knit and it's really thick, yeah, really keeps the cold out, so I love this wool. Um, and yeah, I love to think of this crazy sheep every time that I use this wool. So thanks to Jenny and Rawdon for giving me that information, and I hope you have a really good new year. All right, take care everyone, bye! Still smells of sheep. <laughs> um, yeah, and actually, I know I wasn't meant to cast on anything else before I finished that jumper, which I will be able to focus on now. Now I've finished all my 12 skeins videos. Um, but I did Ange from Yarn and Yarns is a bad influence because I did cast on this um, puffball cowl because I was tidying up the other day and I just wrapped all the scraps and I ended up with. Uh, a yellow scrap ball and I just thought oh I'll, I'll just do a little crochet cowl and it's actually really nice and thick well except for where the holes are but I hadn't decided on what pattern I was going to use yet and I think the tighter knit the tighter crocheted version of the puff ball 
is going to be a really nice one and I've just used this is what I was saying this is dyed with turmeric but it looks just like the tormentil which is this colour um, yeah so I love these colours together <laughs> uh, but I probably won't really do that um, I'll focus on my other knitting stuff but yeah um, I have been following the 12 cast ons of Christmas and that's been a really fun one to watch even if I wasn't meant to cast on any more things what do you call it do you call it casting on when it's crocheting I don't really know I just mess about with crochet really I can just about crochet a tea cozy granny squares and normal skeins um, I might try and pimp up my crochet paper chain party to make it look a bit fancy because um, it's not the most exciting paper chain at the moment but if you do want to look at the tutorial you can have a little go on that um, oh, I'm trying to remember what I said before I accidentally didn't press record um, it's been nice to watch Angie's videos because no one else seemed to be doing anything at the start of the year. I think everyone had gone into hibernation you know that period of time between Christmas and New Year um, but I had watched Char Charlie Button Yarns had done a podcast video and who else oh yeah I was talking about Fibre Tales wasn't I because she's Danish and she's got a lovely accent to listen to it's really nice to watch a bit and and listen a bit and she was just talking about struggling to write patterns and how that wasn't the most fun part of her job and she just really liked designing which I totally relate to <laughs> I wrote a pattern last night in like an hour and I thought oh I need to do more simple patterns like this because when you get into socks it seems to be lots of counting I don't maybe I'm writing the pattern a bit too tricky so I need to work on that um, but oh yeah I was watching the Bearded Pearl podcast <gasps> they're so funny Caleb and Justin they're like I do more knitting than you <laughs> and they talk about their chipmunks and a bit about quilting which I quite like quilting I just made a load of baby quilts for Christmas um, and they were really fun and it's really nice to send something out to my friends little babies and just think oh even if I'm not seeing them at least I'll have a little thing and be like well as much as babies you know think about stuff they'll be like hmm, someone's looking out for me they made me a quilt it's soft and I like to eat it <laughs> um, yeah so that's been quite nice Right, that's the end. I'm going to edit this and then I can continue to tidy up my craft studio. But hopefully the crafting fairy might give me more scraps of yarn so I can make more on my scrappy puffball cowl. Yellow, please. Some of these are naturally dyed, so I get a lot of light yellowy browns. Or I did at the start. Uh, but my... The start of my natural dyeing process was, yay, brown, again. So at least I've managed to find a few pop colours. And um, yeah, I'll be able to put them in my yellow cow. Okay, bye for now. Stay strong. You get this. Mm -hmm.